is yeah, one to one. So when you guys look at 3x squared minus 4, you guys should know what this graph looks like. You say, oh, ooh, ooh, I know, I know. That's a vertical stretch of 3 that's shifting down 4, right? So OK, we say 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks something like this. Now, if you are going to reflect this about the y equals x line, you guys might be a little weak on your geometry skills. But if you remember geometry class, we practiced this. The, the graph, the inverse graph, looks like this. Now, this is the problem. Because what is the title of our chapter? Functions. And I just graph something that is not a function. So you guys would see that's an issue, right? We're studying functions. And then the inverse is not a function, right? So what the reason why is because this is not what we call a one-to-one -one function. Quadratics are functions. They're not one-to-one -one functions. And basically what that means is every x has to have a unique y function. Here's an example of a one-to-one -one function. Cube root. Every x has its own y. x squared doesn't have its own, every x doesn't have its own y, right? 2 and negative 2 both share the y value 4, correct? So it's not one-to-one. -one. And you can also tell by looking at a graph, instead of sleeping, you can tell that they don't pass the horizontal line test. So if a function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, it's not one-to-one. -one. Now, fortunately for us, we actually get around this because they gave us a restriction. They said, oh, it's OK. I want, we're going to do a quadratic, but only do a quadratic for x values that are less than 0. And I say, oh, well, thankfully, I practiced that and the piecewise functions to um, lessen. So graphing values that are less than 0 is going to look something like that. I don't need to worry about the positive values. Yes? So now I at least know what the graph is going to look like. Let's actually do the math to find the inverse. Swap that with y. Flip the x and y's. x equals 3y squared minus 4. Right? So replace f of x with y. Swap the variables. Now just solve for y. So you add the 4, add the 4. x plus 4 equals 3y squared. Divide by 3, divide by 3. Well, guys, over here, we had to multiply the 4 thirds times both. Don't we have to divide both of those by 3? Yes. I'm going to prefer to leave the 1 third on the outside, though. Instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to rewrite it as multiplying by 1 third. Now, to get rid of y squared, you're going to have to square root both sides. Please remember, guys, whenever you introduce square root, you have to include plus or minus. So therefore, f inverse of x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 third x plus 3. But we have an issue here. Here is what a radical looks like. If you have a negative on the outside, it would look like that, right? Right? If you multiply by a negative on the outside of a radical, that's a reflection of the x-axis. Well, guys, you can't have the plus and the minus. You either have to have one. So which one of these is going to be a reflection? Well, let's shift this graph over. Let's look at the positive version first. The 1 third is a horizontal stretch of 1 third. This is three units to the left. That's not the best. Does that look like the inverse graph? What about this one? Does that look like it's reflected about the y, y equals x line? Yeah. So what we can see is. Since this restriction is, is since our domain is for x values that are less than 0, we need to restrict our inverse function to the negative square root. Yes? Why is it x plus 3? Is it is. Maybe that's why my graph didn't look so great. Um, oh, well, yeah, I, I guess I didn't count that like down. So that's 4. That's 4. There we go. OK? So yes. But good catch. Thank you. All right, cool. 